There's a need to fear. The Underhills are here. Broadcasting live, live and around the world. Around the world. From Cabana One. The only podcast that's all ball bearings. Your ultimate source for everything Fletch. Moon River. Thank you, Doc. You ever serve time? Laker Jim and his beat reporters will stop at nothing to make sure Fletch lives forever. Forever. (laughs) They don't shower much. This is Fletchcast. Thank you, Sammy, and welcome to day three. I'm your host, Laker Jim, and this is TED Talk. TED Ideas worth spreading. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's seven days of Underhill. Jake, Bob, it's hump day. Woof. It's a new day. I, I didn't expect this to be so so exhausting. <laughs> I, I literally slept under a hill last night. I mean, oh, I, I, nice. I was trying to oh. figure out where I could go to just become one with Underhill's spirit. Mm-hmm. I yeah. I had a uh, a nice meal, but I think I I did take the last bite. You did, and, you did. Yes, and and at my age, if I was up half the night with indigestion mm-hmm. because of that last bite. But I you know. know what? Damn it, it was worth it. Did you tip your waiter? Of course. Oh, I'm not that. I'm not a Ted Underhill. I'm not that bad. <laughs> All right. Well, I always tip my waiter. And listen, and 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 we're not saying Ted Underhill never tipped. He didn't tip that guy. Well, it's true. We don't know his tipping history. You know, if anything, he could have been a very generous yes. tipper. I think he, I think he and, was, to be honest. Yeah. If you hover over him waiting for him to eat or, you know, to finish, maybe not so much. Exactly. Instead of knocking the waiter out, what does he say? Maybe next time. Hey, say la vie. Tomorrow's another day. He gives second chances. <laughs> I don't think it's very likely he was a, a, a good tipper. But, but here's another thing. I think that there are so many factors, as you mentioned on day one, so many factors that went into him having issues with that goddamn racket club. You know, people constantly charging meals to his account. You know, people pretending that they're letting people in that claim that he's with his party when they're not. You know, he's he's got his own set of issues that he's going to have to talk to somebody about there. You know, you can't totally blame him for, for everything bad going on around him, especially when, you know, Fletcher's, <laughs> Fletcher's manipulating the situation and making him lose his mind. Well, you're right. right. I mean, that's true, too. You're, you know, it's a good point. We don't know what happened to him that day. He could have, you know, he he could have got a bad diagnosis at the dermatologist. Could have. We were talking could've. about he could have chafing issues. I mean, there's a million different things that could, you know, maybe his shorts were too tight. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he just played around and now he's irritated. <laughs> I don't know why I keep coming back to skin conditions, but I mean, yeah. To make his day even worse, he came out, found his car as a huge dent in it from a tennis racket, you know? So that's true. That could have been his car. You're exactly right. We don't know that either. Oh, I think at this point, I think at this point, we know it was his car. We made it so. <laughs> What are we getting into today? Well, I'm glad I asked that question. Originally, I had planned the uh, background of William Trailer today, but again, that's a very dark story. So, want to keep things light, want to keep the momentum going. Downloads are insane. The feedback is coming in. Everyone loves Seven Days of Underhill. We're in day three. We want to kick it off with something fun. I want to talk today about the pop culture phenomenon that is the Underhills. As we've done this segment in the past and bob's done a, 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 an amazing job with it tracking down the different references to fletch all over the world and across television film theater everything youtube and we find a similar theme among references underhill 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 so bob why don't you pick one of your favorite ted underhill pop culture references and let's talk about that today Fletch pop culture. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it, I think that the most common one is that something we've spoken about before, we're going to talk about again, is the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. What do you guys think about this reboot? It sucks. There, I said it. And who's directing this shit anyway? Kevin fucking Smith? Smells like this reboot went up in smoke. We have uh, a situation where, just like in, in, in the world of Fletch, when you're finding yourself in trouble, you have to really find a way to cover your ass and get out of there. And Ralph Garman, who is an actor in many of Kevin Smith's later movies, not, not his earlier stuff, but his later movies, has become kind of a staple. He was in Red State. He was in this movie. He's having a, a bit of a, uh argument with uh, the two main characters, Jay and Silent Bob, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. So same basic premise as the first movie. They're trying to get across country, Jay and Silent Bob, to stop a movie from being made. Right. But of course, they have no money. So they got to come up with a plan. And they overhear this guy talking very loudly on the phone named Ted Underhill. Wow. It's one of the best Fletch references I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Take a listen to this. Then we'll come back and talk about it. Sound good? Yeah, I've never heard it. Good old Kevin Smith, up to his old tricks. Take a listen. All right, I'm going to give you the credit card number. Again, I'm going to read it so slowly and out loud in public so that you will understand. All right, the name is Ted Underhill. Not Ed. Ted! And the number is 9584... Ted Underhill? Yo! I'm Ted motherfucking Underhill! That is so funny. <laughs> so, I mean, could there be a greater Ted Underhill reference than that? No, that's that's as good as it gets for Ted Underhill. Yeah, and it's not and it's not discreet either. <laughs> no, I mean, no. there's no it's pretty obvious. Hats off to Kevin, who listen, he could be so jaded. You know, after what he went through with Fletch and and listen, the movie not happening was not entirely Kevin Smith's fault. No, 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 no. So, no. but he could very much have a bad taste in his mouth from his meeting with Chevy, from his you know undertaking of writing a script and it never happening and all this kind of stuff. But yet he continues to put Fletch references in his oh. films, and and that's awesome. The way the uh, actor uh, goes over the top with oh, I'm Ted mm-hmm. Underhill, and the way he screams the credit card number just to facilitate the needs of, of, the, of them <laughs> needing to steal a credit card. It's such a brilliantly planned, you know, uh, scene, too. But it's just so great, too, that Jay walks out being so Jay, for, for lack right. of a better explanation. I, I imagine if the actual Ted Underhill were there, he'd be furious about that situation. But, it, again, it wouldn't be the first time it happened to him. And I wonder how many people pick up on that. And guys our age definitely do. Oh, I mean, yeah. If you If you don't pick up on that, then. You know, you're you're not front. You're you're, you're younger. <laughs> there's no way you could be. There's no way you could be 40 or older and not understand that reference. Yes. There's just the, no way. The Uber yeah. driver that pulls up and says Ted Underhill. <laughs> that's Fred Armisen, who's so great in everything. He does. Fred Armisen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had a nice role in yeah. that movie too. And that's worth a, that's worth a watch for any for any Fletch fan. Not only for the uh, Ted Underhill references, uh, but also just the movie itself. You know, he's, it's one of Kevin Smith's better later projects that he's done. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. And we had just that Ted Lasso reference uh, a few weeks ago on the show. And that's a a new show, too. So, yeah. So the references keep coming and coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We talked about it earlier in the week and we're going to talk about it again. Underhill will always live on an infamy, just being the person whose credit card you put it on. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and and the reference it isn't the first, and it won't be the last for sure. No, not if we have anything to say about it. <laughs> Are any of you guys Lord of the Rings fans or 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 Tolkien fans? No, no, no I'm not. But I think I know. I'm, going with I'm well. not either. So I I was hoping you guys were going to jump in and say you are. One thing I did discover is that in one of the Lord of the Rings films, and forgive me for not knowing, Mister Underhill is the name that Gandalf gives Frodo during one of the movies so he wouldn't be able to be identified how crazy is that's a movie reference underhill i thought that was from i thought that was from the books i didn't realize that i couldn't i I could be wrong i could be wrong yeah i don't know either i don't know if that's you're probably not coincidence or 
Yeah, yeah I saw wow. in several places that Mr. Underhill is, I guess, during his travels to, to use the name, he's he's advised to use the name Mr. Underhill. It's an alias, I guess. It's it's mm-hmm. it's sort of exactly Pearl Baggins is. alias is Mr. Underhill. Huh. Always oh, proud to cater to the little folk, Mr. Uh... Underhill. My name's Underhill. Underhill. We're friends of Gandalf the Grey. Can you tell him we've arrived? <laughs> you draw far too much attention to yourself, Mr. Underhill. Wow. I would love to I'd love to look I'd love to know more about that. If anybody any of our listeners knows anything about that, please call in and let us know. I'd love to know which movie and in what context this line comes through. Oh, well, listen to this. Listen to this. So um, in the Tolkien Gateway, okay. the Underhill family had branches in the Shire and in Bree. When Frodo Baggins made the decision to leave the Shire with the ring, Gandalf said that he must leave the name of Baggins behind and gave wow. him the traveling name of Underhill. Wow. So, yes. Interesting. I know Hobbit fans <laughs> will be angered at this, but clearly stolen from the movie Fletch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what isn't stolen from the movie Fletch? I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a dead right. giveaway. They would not. You want to keep these kind of Easter eggs vague. <laughs> uh, is it J.R.R. Tolkien? Yeah. yeah. Now, you would think Gregory McDonald would slap a Underhill lawsuit on Tolkien so fast his little hobbit head would spin off. But even a puny, wimpy, balding lawyer who can't get it up will tell you that there we're in kind of a gray area. All right, all gray. Charcoal. And you're going to find out why on tomorrow's episode. So don't miss day four of Seven Days of Underhill. For Jake and Bob, I'm Laker Jim. If you know a pop culture reference out there, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. But for today, stay the same wonderful people you are, and we will talk to you tomorrow. See ya.